Okay, hello Cirrus pilots, this is Elliot Flourish, and uh, today we're doing a lesson on engine failure procedures. Uh, we're going to simulate that today we're in IFR, uh, going up towards Truckee, and we've had an engine failure. We've got a high uh, ceiling at uh, nearby airports here, 3,000 foot ceiling, and uh, we just had some roughness running of the engine and the first thing that we want to do we want to stage cool the engine and we want to go ahead and uh, activate the autopilot uh, going direct to a nearest airport so as quickly as possible we'd like to go up and uh, proceed nearest airport direct enter enter and you can see the airports behind you we're going to go ahead and autopilot couple this so we've got our hands free to do some uh, checklist procedures and indicated airspeed we're going to go for an indicated airspeed of uh, 88 knots which is our best glide so we're scrolling that in using the scroll knob in indicated airspeed mode and looking for 88 you can see the autopilot is pulling us around to that nearest airport Auburn and um, we've still got plenty of altitude to play with so because of that extra altitude we've got lots of time to go through our flow check and try to get things running well again uh, first thing we want to do here is uh, make sure we go through a little bit of a flow check to see if we can restart it so we're going to start by checking our throttle quadrant play with different throttle settings maybe throw the mixture full rich uh, make sure the boost pumps on and uh, switch tanks looks like we're balanced and we might come up and take a look at the magnetos uh, and take a look at that we've still got 20 percent power so we should flip over to the engine page see what's going on maybe check one mag you can see one mag is uh, not better than both and we'll go to the other magneto here and it looks like no gain there so we'll go back to both we're still at 20% power here and we're four miles from Auburn Airport we'll get back off of the engine page and go back to taking a look at uh, our glide to Auburn so from 7600 feet we ought to be able to make it to Auburn it's only four miles away uh, we want to know approximately what the elevation is at Auburn so we go over to waypoint page one and we can take a look at info one and we can see that uh, the elevation there at Auburn's 1539 and it just uh, caught the altitude that was pre-selected so we want to make sure that we clear this out and maybe set something low as a as a minimum altitude that we would go to we'll just say 3,000 feet since uh, 1539 is our field elevation we want to make sure that we're at about 3,000 feet downwind to beam the numbers. Now we're only two and a half miles away. We've done the restart. We want to confirm we've got best glide, we've got fuel selector, uh, we've got uh, the ignition switch, fuel pump, power lever. We tried all that. Uh, CHTs and oil temperatures are good. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't cool them into the white during this procedure we want to keep them in the green at all times and the next thing we want to do is tighten up our seat belts make sure our seats are upright and assume that emergency landing position which would be uh, making sure that everybody's got their seat upright with their hands down uh, low below the airbag and uh, everybody's briefed and we're thinking about the caps at this point so that that handle should be exposed at this point you might pull this cover off and have passenger read it now we're coming up overhead the airport here we're only um, looks like just less than a mile away and so what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the autopilot and we're going to put it into a bank and we're going to spiral overhead the airport here at Auburn we want to make sure that we get the frequency in here for Auburn and we're going to scroll down you can see our airplane right overhead the airport there and we're going to go to uh, Unicom since we've already got the weather on display we're going to put the Unicom frequency in there um, in reality we would have
declared the emergency with NorCal already and uh, or held the button down and switched over to 121.5 and made our Mayday call. Mayday Mayday, Cirrus 789 or Bravo Juliet. We've had an engine failure. We're over Auburn Airport at 6,600 and uh, we've got two souls on board. We're a blue and silver Cirrus with an engine failure. Uh, we're directly over Auburn. We're gonna land here and uh, we'll get back to you once we're on the ground. So that's a 121.5 or NorCal call with the Mayday call. And then uh, we're gonna squawk 7700. So would go to 7700, but we're gonna leave it on a 1200 code for the practice that we're doing. So you can see that my a bank of about 15 degrees. Uh, I'm gonna tighten that up just a little bit here. Uh, I like 25 over the top of the airport. So for a moment, we're going to go to heading mode and make sure that we're staying over the airport here. And we're going to zoom this in to a more useful scale. I like a five mile scale when I'm over the airport. And uh, we're going to try to make left traffic for 2.5. And we want to be at 3,000 feet when we're a beam the runway at that key point, a beam 2.5. So, you could use heading mode to help you do this while we finish up remaining areas of the checklist. So uh, if we're getting down to low altitude and this engine is completely quit and it's not helping us, then we might go ahead and uh, go to mixture idle cutoff, fuel selector off, ignition switch off, and flaps as required. So that would be mixture idle cutoff, boost pump off, fuel selector, we'd have to pull this up and twist it to the off position and the magnetos need to go off as well and then we want to make sure that we're still staying close to our landing spot here so we're either in roll mode or we're in heading mode to uh, stay towards our key point so again if I disconnect the autopilot and I bank it over if I bank it to 25 degrees we hit autopilot on indicated airspeed mode so that turning on autopilot defaults to roll mode roll mode maxes out at 25 degrees of bank and we click this to an indicated airspeed of 88 and it'll hold us right there now I can see that we're pretty close to where we want to be so I'm going to switch back to heading mode here and we'll start heading towards our key point we'd like to be at our key point a beam the two five numbers at a thousand uh, or 1500 feet above the runway. We've still got a lot of altitude because we're really descending with a little bit of power here to keep things warm. So I'm gonna take a little bit more power off just to simulate something a little closer to what we would have if the power was all the way off. We've done our shutdown procedures here and only thing we have remaining to do is battery and alternator master switches off and uh, again ensuring that everybody's buckled up securely uh, prior to landing. So we're going to consider this checklist to be complete and we're going to go ahead and tuck it away and we're going to focus more on keeping ourselves in this key position. So let's go back into that uh, roll mode again. Uh, so he's disconnecting the autopilot, putting it back into roll and he's banking it over to 25 degrees of bank and he's going to turn the autopilot on and it holds roll mode and now he's going to put it into indicated airspeed mode indicated at uh, 88 good and so now we're still spiraling overhead the airport we're simulating that we're still in IMC conditions at any point if you're not a hundred percent sure that this is going to work out splendidly then we're going to go ahead and go right right to that parachute but right now it's still looking pretty good. We're expecting at 3,000 feet AGL to pop out of the clouds and, and we'll be in pretty good shape. So now I'm going to start making calls to the locals here in Auburn. Auburn traffic, Sierra 789 or Bravo Juliet is overhead the field at 4,800, simulating an engine failure for left down one runway 25 Auburn. All right, confirming again that we've got the right frequency and that is 122.7. There's nobody talking down there. 
So now we've got 1,700 feet to go. This airplane loses about 1,000 feet with each 360. So it looks to me like we could do one more 360 at 25 to 30 degrees of bank and still end up uh, pretty close to our key point where we'd like to be here. I'm going to zoom it in one more click to a three mile scale and uh, we'll let it go ahead and do one more circle here. I'm going to reduce the power just a little bit more so we get uh, uh, more realistic, something closer to a thousand foot per minute descent rate. Right now we're maybe 600 foot per minute. And so now we'll start hand flying the airplane here. We can see down there, we just popped out of the clouds. There's our runway. We're still very high for that runway. And we're going to go ahead and uh, break off the autopilot and start maneuvering to be about one circles width wide a beam the two five numbers. So we want to end up kind of over the railroad tracks, pointed the opposite direction that we are right now. We're at 4,000, we've got a thousand feet or so that we need to lose before we're at that point. But it's all about just making sure that we uh, taper our turn so that we end up not too high uh, in good position to make this landing. So let's go a little slower with our turn. Maybe we'll go out a little this way so that we've got a little bit more room to lose that extra altitude. We're gonna keep this mixture leaned out here so that we warm that cylinder up. We've got one cylinder that's starting to get cool here. And now we'll go ahead and work our way back again towards that key point. So let's go left turn, back a beam, the, the numbers here. So this stage cooling is all about uh, keeping the engine in good shape. Uh, we don't want to do a go around at full power with this cool of cylinders. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to warm that one cylinder back up again in time. If we do end up having to do a go around, we'd like to do partial power at first. So we got ourselves a little wider, but we've still got 300 feet. So let's go ahead and bring it back in a little closer and uh, see if we can get ourselves to that key point, which is about a mile wide to the two five numbers. Auburn traffic, Cirrus is on a 45 for left down one runway two five Auburn. Okay, so now we're coming on in, we're looking good and we're just about where we wanna be, this is great. And I'm gonna have you record the rest of this and I'll hand, I'll hand fly from here on out. So if you can record the uh, circle land here, we're gonna go ahead and assume that the engine's completely quit at this point. And go ahead and pan out and take a look at the runway there. You can see we're well within gliding distance of that. And now we can assume any speed that we like in order to make the field. So you can see the descent rate has uh, increased a bit more towards the uh, thousand foot per minute that we would expect. And now we're going to turn towards base. Auburn traffic, Cirrus is turning left base, runway 25, Auburn. We're going to put in a notch of flaps. I'm going to get rid of the terrain display. And aim us right towards the runway. Okay, we'll go ahead with that. Auburn traffic, Cirrus is final, runway 25 Auburn. All right, so we want to make sure we keep a little extra height. You can see us white over white on the VASI. And now we can go ahead and go full flaps and we can go with a little bit of a slip to decay some of the extra speed that we've got here. Now we're a little sideways right now, so we'll straighten it out just before we touch down. We've got the field made, nice. We're straightening it out. Okay, everything worked out. Flaps are coming up. We're giving it max braking. And everything's ended quite nicely here at Auburn. Auburn traffic, 0789 or Bravo Juliet's exiting runway 25 at Echo. And we could really use a beer. Okay, go ahead and uh, shut it off.